And right now at 6, we now know the identity of the man whose face was gnawed off during a struggle on the MacArthur Causeway. Plus, we've learned disturbing new information about the past of the man accused in that horrific attack. Could it all have been avoided? The victim is a 65-year-old homeless man who may have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Local 10's Glenna Milberg is live from Jackson Memorial Hospital with the latest on his condition. Lori Calvin, critical is his condition, and by all accounts, three quarters of his face is essentially missing. His name is Ronald Popo, as you said, 65-year-old homeless man. We have known his identity for a few days. We've held off until police could notify his next of kin. He was known to camp, if you will, his homeless home near the MacArthur, but right near it is unclear whether he knew or how he knew Rudy Eugene before that horrific attack on Saturday. Now let's talk about Rudy Eugene. You've heard some police theorize he was on some uh, drug-induced psychosis. Well, other police officers we met today, as well as Eugene's ex-wife, called him possibly mentally ill. And so we explored that today, and you might be surprised about what we found. Eight years before an officer shot Rudy Eugene to halt Saturday's frenzied, ravaging, cannibalistic attack, this North Miami Beach officer witnessed Eugene's bizarre behavior, arrested him at his mother's home in 2004 for beating her and threatening to kill her. We can hear him yelling and, and throwing things inside the house. In fact, Eugene made history that day as the first person ever tasered by an NMB officer, and records show it took three times to subdue him. He wasn't cooperative. He wouldn't follow orders. He was very belligerent. Uh, he had that thousand yard stare that he's just staring, you know, right into you. And Mike Pond says Eugene may have been mentally ill, but had no history to go on. That's pretty horrific, and it's pretty sad. Miami Day Judge Steve Leifman has seen horrifying sadness. We caught up with him on his way to China, where he was invited to speak on the court's internationally known diversion program he created that gets help, not jail time, for the mentally ill. Despite Eugene's repeated arrests and erratic behavior, he was never referred to that program. And we're getting much more sophisticated at that, but four years ago, which was the last time we really would have had a shot to get him, he just never came into the mental health part, of it, unfortunately. That 2008 arrest on drug charges was Eugene's most recent. Rudy Eugene. He stood quietly for his bond hearing that took less than a minute that day. He was eventually found guilty, but the court suspended his sentence, writing, the defendant is not likely to engage in a criminal course of conduct. Eugene proved that prediction wrong Saturday. My that's Glenna Milberg reporting to us live. Glenna, do we have you back there? Hello, can you hear me? I, we can hear you now, Glenna. We can see you as well, Glenna. Can you hear us? I can hear you, Laura. Yes, I, what I was going to say, excuse the technical difficulties, you know, Miami detectives hope to learn so much more about what happened on Saturday from Ronald Popo, but you know, it will be such a long time before anyone here can really say whether he'll pull through for that.